the first film that Kate Blanchett Aren't did. She's beautiful. I saw her at the at the um, crew screening, and she I spat, I stood and talked with her and uh, Bruce for a while. Oh, mate, you, you can have uh, you can have them all. I'll have Kate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think she's I think she's a fantastic actress. But I saw her in that film. Um, she might have won the Academy Award. Was nominated where she was Elizabeth, a, perhaps? She, no, 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 no. Made in America after Elizabeth. She was a psycho one. She'd been very wealthy, and now she wasn't. Oh. Well, oh, the she, recent Woody Allen one. I think it was Woody Allen. Yeah. Yes, about three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. How good was she in it? Yeah. I, I just. I'm, I forget I mean, the title, but I know. She blows I mean, me away. Yeah. So I think You're she's fantastic. Well I think um, she's so famous. this is that's '97. So mm. you know, you've now been in the industry for 30 years or so. Mm. How much had the technology changed by the oh, time you, you sort of retired from sound mixing? Oh, mate, it was like, it was like, um, like riding a push bike and driving a Porsche, you know what I mean? Like, there, there, was, there were certain things that were just elementary things, like that's a big change, that's a big change, that's a big change. But also, everything changed gradually with it. For instance, when, when, you, when you first could stop and start again, this is when Magnatech developed their thing that we, what they call remote editing, which meant you were, you were mixing along and suddenly you made a mistake. You just hit the reverse button, you went back 20 or 30 feet, rolled forward, got everything ready again, all the same as before. You went playback live, playback live, and adjusted things, hit the record button. So when did we that move to full magnetic tape and into full multi-track and even, did you work in <laughs> digital? No, not by this stage probably, 1997? We were doing, um, no, we, we, were, we were recording in, uh, in ni- by 97. No, we still had, we still had tracks and we, um, we were recording onto a 24 track machine. But the, as, as I said, the big changes were stop start mm. so you could pick up and at the same time you could aim your your uh, sound to three, or in my case four, <laughs> different stripes <laughs> on a recorder. So you could have music, dialogue effects separate. Um, that was a really big change. Then Dalton, that was about 19, early 70s. Very early 80s came Dolby Sound with um, the, the two track Dolby system, optical system where uh, the, the matrix would, it would be, the, 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 the magic machine would read the sound and, and, and even though I was only on two tracks, it had come out of left, center, right, and surround. Yeah. That was the Dolby Matrix and you system. And noise reduction. And noise in. reduction. Yeah. That was a big deal too. And then 24-track um, recording on, on a tape, um, on a tape machine as opposed to... On the two-inch tapes. Yes, correct. Yeah. That was a big change because that led to spooling up, spooling back, and it's staying in sync with the picture and so on. Mm. That was, a, that was a, a sort of a revolution. So were you mixing surround at this point, like 5.1, 7.1 at all? We, we had, we had a, no, the surrounds were, again, all to do. Um, initially, I've got to try and think of this now, the surrounds were all to do with the two-track um, um, Dolby thing, and, and we listened in surrounds, and so when we were mixing, we heard the surrounds discrete. Mm. But when you made the optical transfer, it took it down to two tracks and the, and the cinema took it back to four. But it wasn't foolproof. It was pretty good. But to go down to two and come back to four depended on, on sounds being in and out of phase with each other or right, you know, yeah. that sort of stuff. So sometimes... So we didn't have true surround happening yet you didn't well you, well you you well well it sounded like when it worked when it worked perfectly like dis- discrete channels dedicated no, channels di- the discrete yeah. things were different when you were mixing surround in whatever form it was were you thinking dialogue goes center channel effects and atmoses using the stereo spectrum yeah. how much did you use the rear surrounds if at all oh we did no we did but see that again that was a, that's the thing where i didn't care how it got there i only care what it sounded like so that was up to the people who were, who were, you know, designing the systems. So when we, we, when we listened, we didn't have to make any allowance for anything. We actually heard things in, the, in these speakers, these mm. speakers, whatever. So I, when, the, when we got to the point where, the, where you could do the rear surrounds, was about the time I think I got out of the game. Right. I think that's about That's right. when it started getting very complicated. Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, I've got mates that still, still mix. The, the, Effects mixer I used, a fellow called Phil Hayward, fantastic effects mixer. He 
he still mixes the movies, he mixes, the, the, does effects and does Foley and mixes films and again now. And of course, the, one, the other thing is, that was the amazing difference was the actual physical volume of things you had to handle as opposed to now. I mean, you put the soundtrack in your pocket, don't you? It's a 10 reel movie, 12 reel movie. In those days, not only did you have a Pantechnican truck arrive up from Melbourne, and they really came in a Pantechnican with all these 35 millimeter soundtracks to mix a thing mm. like Farlap, like so that was 84 Farlap, so well into the 80s. And I think into the 90s, you had all these soundtracks. Um, and then even when you final mixed, and you had uh, you either had them on a, on a 35 mil magnetic, you had 12 reels of that, and you had a safety copy of that mix. You didn't put the safety copy on the same plane as the yeah. as the, that copy, and so on. Uh, um, and even when you got to 24 track, and you had final mix on a 24 track, I think you still only had two reels on a, on a, on a, on the big a, um, Ampex reel. So now, apart from the fact that everything is just dip dip dip, you don't see anything. It's dip, dip, dip when you carry it away, isn't it? Well, now it's all digital. It's on a hard drive. Yes, yes, yes Did exactly. Did you ever have any major disasters, like losing the soundtrack, erasing things? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, this is pretty scary. Um, I mixed a film called Between Wars at United Sound in about, oh, that'd be about 1975 or six, directed by Michael Thornhill. And the, one of the lead actors was um, from that very famous English acting family, Redgrave, I think, was he Robin? Was he that right? Robin Redgrave? The, he was a Redgrave sons. anyway. Yeah, one right. of the sons. He was, he was, it was, this was a war film. Uh, Australian blokes in the, in the war in, in, in England, um, in the First World War. And he came in to loop his dialogue on the way to the airport. <laughs> and he went and I wiped the first bloody line. And he's, he was in the cab on the way to Mascot. That was pretty exciting. And you, did you get him back? Oh yeah, we found him. We got him back <laughs> and, he, and he got his plane. That, that, People weren't too impressed with that.